Good morning, I'm Ruth Whaley and I'm here at Risk Minds 2012 and I'd like to introduce you to Professor Paul Embrecht. Um, Professor Embrecht is Professor of Maths at ETH Zurich. He's also had many other professorships in European universities. He's also an author, uh, particularly on modeling of extreme events uh, in risk and finance. And he's also done extensive consulting and advisory work to both <coughs> regulators and financial institutions. So, Professor Embrex, you have the perfect combination of academia, policy, and also industry, so the practitioner's perspective on risk. So, welcome. A um, couple of questions for you. First of all, we've been spending a lot of time here today talking <coughs> about post crisis, what people are doing, and how to look forward. Mm -hmm. And so, one question is putting together the crisis and quantitative finance. Today, can quantitative finance help forecast? future cycles and the, the cresting of those cycles in bubbles and that can we can we forecast these future catastrophic and therefore avert them possibly okay I mean first of all I think uh, I know that there are several people also at ETH you, you just mentioned right. before in the pre-discussion uh, right, DJ right. Sornet and right. people like Frank Schweitzer at ETH of course they're very much involved with that right. <coughs> and they are quantitative finance specialists so in that, that sense perhaps the question should be answered yes I personally am not involved in that and I think it's even important to realize that I come from the more mathematical point of view and if you narrow down a bit quantitative finance to about what people call uh, uh, mathematical finance, yep. which is a subset, yep. which is a stronger right. mathematical component and is very strong at ETH, yeah. I think it's important to realize that these researchers, including myself, are more interested in trying to explain the coexistence of prices. Okay. At a particular point in right. time, which right. is a non-trivial issue. Yes. I mean, right. why should, for instance, a price of a, a right. swap here, an interest rate curve there, at a point in time, be linked the way they are linked? Right. If, if not, right. of course, you get an arbitrage situation. Right. So, right. I think that's very important distinctions. Yes, quantitative finance has people working on that, uh, and I think uh, an example of my colleague Sornet is a, a, a clear example. Uh, but I think we should really realize that the people are more interested in the mathematical modeling of, of, uh, of finance. Right. Uh, they're not really very careful, uh, not really very interested in going for forecasting, but more for explaining in uh, contemporaneous the prices. The relationship. Although in my talk tomorrow, I will make a very important statement on, on, on predictability, but that will be right. tomorrow. That will be tomorrow. We'll have to wait <coughs> for that. Um, and then, uh, what, do you, what do you feel are the key areas that mathematical finance is going in, and maybe that's different from quantitative finance, yeah. as you pointed out? Well, okay, now, I think now, now I, I, I look a bit at my own research, not because I think it's the, it's the key area, but I think it's sufficiently important. Right. Uh, what I think is a very important issue is model uncertainty. Yes. Model uncertainty, I mean, you have complex right. prices, you have... Uh, right complex products, you have complex markets, you can talk about networks, but I mean just if right. you look at the old CDO market, right. highly complex prices that can be priced under very, very specific uh, conditions. conditions if absolutely. these conditions are violated, then you're totally off. Then you're back to a model of something. And then, and then, then model risk reality. and model uncertainty, I think, right. has always been a very important aspect of our research, has been a very important aspect of, of the market, right. as we have seen in the crisis. And this is one of the main areas of research. I'm not just me, but many people are involved in now. Also, the question of robustness, which is very much related to what extent are prices and hedges dependent on small deviations in the assumptions mm -hmm. of the underlying mm -hmm. markets. Mm -hmm. You can now mm -hmm. talk about fairly normal markets or more extreme oriented markets or not, or a little bit of dependence, more dependence. So that's, I think, a very, very important aspect of research going forward. And I think uh, also industry will have to look very carefully in, in what I think some of the scientists are, are providing there. Right, right. Do you think that um, there also needs to be work done around how people interpret and use model results? And clearly behavioral science has brought a lot of insights into that. Uh, but there seems to be, I mean, that's a whole other area. Yeah. Once you have the model, then what is a non-quantitative person, yeah. which often you're de you know, yeah, people making yeah. the decision, yeah. how do they really approach the value of that information yeah. they've received? No, also in Zurich, behavioral finance is now a very, very big subject right. with very, very good people working there. First statement, I think mathematicians, of course, have always been aware that there's a strong behavioral component there. Right. I mean, as soon as you talk with people in practice, 
you know that's behavioral component. If you stay in your office, you may not realize right. it too much. If you go out, you Good know point. it's there. So that Good it's point. there. Right. Yeah. So that's it's not that mathematicians or, or extreme quantitative oriented people have just neglected that. It's there. Right. Um, I think there's a lot of interesting research going. We may in the next six, seven years see the first real well calibrated models coming out that have a, a non-trivial behavioral component in them. Very interesting. Um, I think yeah. there are new, there's really fascinating new research uh, coming out, I mean I could, I will not discuss it now in detail, but right. where also for us new challenging approaches come up uh, where we work together not just with economists but with, with psychologists right. and, well, and really bring various aspects together not in, in a dreamy way right. because right, in the right. end of the day right. you have to be concrete Absolutely. and I think uh, again the aspect of model uncertainty and the various assumptions underlying model calculations and calibration center so I think it's, it's, a, it's an important area going forward it will not shock the world I think that the scientists are aware of that right. Right. And, uh, I think it's like a pendulum. Perhaps the world has been too quantitative for a while, but right. all the belief in sort of the, the early uh, 80s or so that we tamed the markets, or, the, or even the 2003 and 4, the credit markets were quote unquote tamed. That didn't happen, but of course also the pendulum should not go too far on the other side. They say, well, we can only do it now with behavioral right, aspects. And I think, and, and now I see a real convergence of uh, both of them. Well I mean, I'm exciting work going on. Perfect. Sounds like we're on a good track then. I think we're on a good track. Good. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you, much, Ruth. Thank Pleasure. you.